Anthony. Yes. We're here in Austin. Yes. You're homeless. Unfortunately for right now, yeah. Tell me about it. Well, it's just, uh, I came from San Antonio. I was, you know, living with my mom. Uh, she had cancer. It was like the second round of cancer, and it came back uh, kind of aggressively. Um, unfortunately, her boyfriend that she's, you know, with at the time just isn't a really good guy. He's, like, verbally abusive. He's mentally abusive, like, physically abusive, and it got to the point where it just got, it had become, like, extreme, and I had been draining, like, my resources and my time trying to help my mom get into a better spot, get out of the house, and she would just go back to him, and it just got to the point where I was getting involved, my job was getting affected, and so I had to just leave, and I was like, where can I go where I'm, like, kind of close to my mom if something major happens, but I just can't be a part of that situation myself. And so I found myself here in Austin, it's about an hour away. So if anything really major were to happen to my mom or I needed to get back home, I could just get back home like pretty quick. But um, unfortunately, my the first night I was in the shelters here in Austin, uh, the mats were just so close together and somebody reached over and grabbed one of my bags. I had all my vital documents in there and that was like my birth certificate and my social security card. And so I had to cancel all that stuff. and. Then they make you wait a time period before you can like actually claim that it's stolen in case you find it or just misplaced it. And so now I'm going through that process of getting my birth certificate back and getting some of my documents back. That way I can get a job and like just get back on my feet. And because without ID you can't get a job. And without without an ID like you can't even get services like that lead you to get a job or lead you to get housing. And so it's. It's hard and without an ID. Like before, like I guess it was like they could help you, but like now because of identity theft and people like like misrepresenting who they are, they, right. they, they no, you have to nine, have you have to have an ID. Yeah, since nine eleven, with the terrorism thing, they just cracked down. Yeah, and so. it, and it was making it kind of hard. It's been about I've been homeless for about four months now, and. It's been hard because it's like to get one document, you have to have the other ones. And then to right. have those documents, you have to have those other ones that you're trying to get. And so I finally got um, in contact with a church up on the drag by the UT campus, the, Method the University um, Methodist Church. And they actually helped me like get into like programs where they can help pay for my birth certificate. So that way I don't have to worry about that. They can do it online. So then I can start getting my like documents together. So that's what I'm waiting on right now. But, but so now, family unit or the family relationship must have been so bad that you decided homelessness was better um yeah because it's I've, like all i've really had in my entire life is my mom and so like we're just like this and to see her like get treated like that and then she just goes back to it and then that was spilling over to me like i was getting into fights with her boyfriend and like he would they would bring the drama to my work and I got fired from a couple of jobs and it just got to the point where it, it was the stress level was like up to you here and I just I couldn't handle it anymore because so besides getting your stuff stolen and the cots close together what was shelter life like uh, it's it's not I mean it's a shelter and like so for that you have to be grateful but then like now to like even get in there it's like really hard they're in transition of moving the shelters out towards del Valle where the county jail is and so they've cut like half the number of beds for like single men and for like even for women the arch runs on a lottery and so you're not even really guaranteed to get a bed even oh, they if, do the lottery thing here yeah so like you're uh. not, so you're not even guaranteed a bed like you could be in line at three o'clock when the gates open so they kick you out during the day yeah, and then you'll still, uh, and then you'll still get like, and if like you could have been like the third person in line waiting to pull a number, and if you like the number, the guy in front of you could get number twenty-seven, and you get a hundred and thirty, and that guy's gonna get a bed before right. you, and he was all the way at the end of the line, barely made it in. Yeah, the lottery because he just because he just got it's the their pick way of the draw. Of trying to deal with not enough beds for too many people, but yeah. it's just a horrible. And then they say that like they have to do it that way because if they don't, then it's it becomes like an issue where people will just camp right outside or like, you know, waiting to get the bed for the next day and then it's not really fair and they say that they've been just accused Just build of, more shelters. Yeah. They, That's they, what they need to do. They've been accused of like 
playing favorites, you know, like the people that have been there. Like, right, that's forever. why they're doing a the lottery. So now right. they do the lottery, so they say, hey, nobody can like point the finger at us, saying, which I get, you know, that nobody wants to. But still, it's a, it's, ah, it's messed up, but it, it is messed up. Um, people just think, well, they see a homeless bird. Why don't they go into a shelter? Right, and they don't understand. You kicked out in a day. You know, you're kicked out during the day. Like yeah. you said, you're grateful yeah. it's there, yeah. but there's so many roadblocks and to you're, get into you're stripped it. of any decency of a human being. I right. don't, you know, I mean, uh. and And that's what it's like, I mean, thank God here in Austin, like there's, like, especially in the downtown area, there's been like, just like nice people, like people who are just like, I mean, just like you, like, you know, like, hey, like, what's your story? Like, what's your name? Like, I like, I know that this didn't just happen overnight so like you know just like, like what happened like and then there are people who are like you know nice enough to point to you like hey, I know about this one program or I know about this one place or I can call my friend who works over here and so like it seems like you get more help from the people that live here than the people that are employed with these organizations to help oh gosh, get you resources and it's like I mean like a lady saw me like I was at the JW Marriott and I had crossed by once and I crossed by again and I was just like looking for cigarettes and this one I had asked a guy for a cigarette and she had seen me ask the guy for a cigarette and she smokes and the guy gave me a dollar and I was like a dollar and a cigarette and I was like man thank you boss I really appreciate that like you didn't have to do that and he was like he's like no that's okay he's like you asked really nice and he's like he's like and you're not pushy he's like I've seen you around and then this lady comes over from the JW Marriott here for a conference, doesn't even know my name. She goes, I seen you pass by, you know, like, you know, a couple times tonight. She was like, can I help you out with anything? She's like, are you hungry? Like, and I was like, man, that would be awesome. And the lady like still hadn't even got my name. Went to the corner bar at the JW Marriott right here, ordered me a burger with like everything on it. And then comes back to me and we're just sitting down talking while the burger is waiting. And the burger comes, and this lady like just went above and beyond, and I just broke down crying because the guy gave me the checkbook, but when I opened up the checkbook, there was a hundred dollar bill in there from her to me. Checkbook. And the the checkbook from the from the oh my god from, from oh the burger. I got it yeah yeah the bill for the food. yeah for the bill for the food the guy handed it to me he goes here's your check and I was like I'm like thinking oh my god, oh my god. this lady just paid. Yeah. And then I opened, I opened it up, and there was a hundred dollar bill. And as I look back at him, he winks and he goes, "That was from her." And I was like, "My God!" And so it's like, I mean, and that happens like a lot. Like you know, like people will see you, like, "Hey, are you hungry?" Like, and they won't give you their leftovers. I mean, yeah, sure, some of them will, but yeah, 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 yeah. I have experienced more times than not. They'll bring me somewhere to go buy me something fresh. Oh my gosh, that's awesome! And then. And that's what I was like, man, there's more help like from people that live here and work here, like just in this little area like that I kind of stay at because it's safer because there's just so many people. I get more help from like these people, like, yeah. you know, like, and not just like money or clothes. I'm talking about like resources to where like I can plug into and like, you know, help myself. Yeah. And, and so like that's one of the things that I've been lucky because like back home in San Antonio, if you're homeless and you're on the street, they automatically think you're on drugs or you're on alcohol, and that's your own you problem. You got that horrible haven for hope. Craven for dope. Yep. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> oh, that's the name now. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's. Because uh, now they can bring it in there. No way. Well, into the Be, courtyard area. Yeah, because now they they said that um. Oh, they're making a low barrier. Oh. They geez. they said to check and to to check everybody as excessive as they do right now. They said it's a violation of yeah, human yeah, yeah. rights. Um, so, but back to, but yeah, it's, you know, the, you're getting more help. You feel like you're getting home more help than from yeah. the nonprofits. Yeah. The nonprofits are just layered with bureaucracy yeah. that for them to go and, and buy a sandwich or to, you know, fill a gas tank or get you a sleeping bag, they have to put in a check request and then it has to get approved and, yeah. you know, that funders don't pay for that stuff. So then they don't do it, and yeah. that's why yeah. we got to reduce the bureaucracy and get everybody to help. And that was one of the things that they were talking about. They said there's, I mean, the, the, the population of Austin is growing at a, they said, a substantial rate. Like, it's, like in the last five years, it's been the fastest growing city in the country, like, three times. Yeah. <laughs> like, 
And they said if 200,000 people would just, in this city, would just donate $10 every month for six months and then, you know, let, let somebody else pick up, pick it up, yeah. we would have enough to fully fund two shelters that would be able to hold about 350 beds each. Wow. Because it would bring in about 2.53 million dollars yeah, wow. every month. Right for these shelters if someone would just donate ten dollars like two not, not even everybody in the city just a fraction of the city yeah. would just donate ten dollars like a month and then like bam that, that, that would yeah. be a shelter and but then it's a lot of people don't want to donate to causes that they don't really know what their money's going to so like even with me like people have told me i was like i just need like i had a family emergency and my brother died and i had to get to corpus and i was like showing people like the, the ticket price and saying hey like i really like i really need to get to corpus for a funeral you know they called and they're like hey like we're here like with anthony and we're gonna be buying him a ticket to corpus a round trip ticket to corpus so he can get to his brother's funeral but we just wanted to make sure that it was like all legit and my mom was like yeah I did. And so like i'm sorry we didn't believe you it's just that so many people come up and ask us for money and what would you want housed people to know about homelessness i would want people to know that homelessness is not just a one-track mind it's anybody can fall into homelessness at any given point like I mean whether you're a millionaire or you barely have like a meal for the day like I mean anybody can fall into homelessness and it's like you could lose a job and not have enough to pay rent and end up in a situation like this or sometimes like just being very real it is addiction sometimes it is alcohol sometimes there are mental health problems but it's not all just a one-track mind. Some people are here because of like family violence. Or they're right. they're well, in... the leading cause of homelessness is lack of affordable housing, and then it's domestic violence and all the others. Yeah, and then with the with the way that the city is rapidly growing and just getting gentrified, it's making it harder and harder yeah. for just like middle-class Americans living in the city just to make it. Like, yeah. I know people that like. They make, I mean, they don't necessarily have like the best jobs, but they, they get paid really good money. Like, and they're make. I mean, they're taking home like $1,300 a month, $1,400 a month after taxes and s stuff, but they still have to have two, three roommates because rents are just going up because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not doing anything to the actual complexes, but it's because like these high rises and yeah, yeah, yeah. With multi billion a month, you can't afford a hotel, uh, uh, anything, you know? And so, so it's, yeah. you know, like, That's, working yeah you can't afford so i know people have like two three four roommates like yeah. and that's how they're able to afford right. an apartment but that's not sustainable like no. you know you, roommates are a nice idea but people are challenging if you had three wishes what would they be oh three wishes um i would eliminate cancer from the world i think that's just and you're a great wish the lives and the talent and just the potential like that this world has lost because cancer is taking people out like so i would say i would eliminate cancer i would ask i would honestly ask for a million dollars to do this shelter project because there's so many people out here who just they need help they don't know where to go to and they're kind of scared to go and ask for help because they don't know where to, they don't know how they're gonna, the response that they're gonna get. So I would want a million dollars to build a shelter so that like so people had a place to go where they wouldn't be kicked out during the day. Yeah. We had a record summer this year, like 68 days of 100 plus degree weather this year. And we had another 50 behind those that were just a degree or two off yeah. of 100. So I would build a shelter to where they, people could come during the day and chill out like I mean not just a lounge pad but like get resources done and have build, community yeah have a yeah, little community dude, you know, like you know like a sense of just normalcy yeah. and number three number three Minnesota Twins win a World Series Minnesota oh my gosh and I thought from, you were in Texas oh. well, well I've been here for 20 plus years so I technically think that counts me as a Texan. Right. I'm only 30. Right. So. Everybody's got their team. Could be someplace else. But 
you know, I love my Twins. I love my Cowboys. I love my Astros. So. There you go. But yeah, I would covered I, all the bases there, literally. Yeah, I would want, <laughs> I'd want, I'd want the, the Minnesota Twins to win a World Series, million dollars to get a shelter built for the community, yeah, and you're and eliminate cancer. Yeah. Well, thank you very much yeah, no for problem. talking to me. Thank you so much. Thank you.